Uh, hello and welcome to my Bevy 0.7 update video. I'm a little bit late on this because I've struggled to find any time where the house is quiet in order to record this. And uh, it's not really something that I think I could cut up into segments like I do with my other videos to use shorter recording times. So really needed the big space. But anyway, uh, for Easter, Cart granted us the greatest gift, Bevy 0.7. Uh, apparently, uh, 123 contributors worked on getting Bevy to the point that it's at, so it's pretty impressive that Bevy's growing so quickly. But let's just get started. The most exciting thing, always at the top, is skeletal animation, which is going to be incredibly useful for making Bevy like a more full-fledged game engine, because at the moment, or until now, it was suitable for making 2D games, but 3D games were much more difficult. You'd have to come up with your own way of animating things, and having a skeletal animation system is going to make that so much simpler for anyone working on a 3D game. It also is able to import the animations with GLTF, so it's good to see that they're keeping that compatibility running. Unlimited point lights for people that were having uh, limitations with the 256 that it originally was. The asterisk is entirely about the fact that it's still technically limited by hardware and memory constraints. Like, you physically can't put infinite lights in because it's not possible, because un um, or unlimited. But that's, that's just, you know, infinities. Uh, light clustering uh, feature and optimization. Uh, I think this just makes everything faster. Like, Really, it's just showing that uh, in this video, they go through having like 256 lights, 5,000 lights, and then like 25,000 lights. And it does have a note that the little spheres that are orbiting around, uh, they go away in the higher one because it's the that becomes the bottleneck. So it's, you could have way more lights if you weren't rendering little spheres flying around. So they're showing like, the limitation of the lights, not the fact that they can't render all the spheres at the same time. Um, configurable light visibility. I didn't actually know this wasn't a thing, but now you can just use the visibility on your lights. It's the same as any other sprite thing that you would have, like a mesh. Uh, what else we got? Uh, texture compression here. Compressed GPU textures is just saying that they've made their shader, I'm assuming, be able to use... Uh, I uh, use the compressed file instead of decompressing it into a raw file. So it's just much better performance and able to like hot reload quicker and uses much less memory. This is going from 12 gigabytes down to five. Though that's still a ridiculous amount of memory, but I think it's because it's pretty high res. Render textures, beautiful change for anyone who wants to have like mirrors or uh, some kind of rendered UI in their game that comes from another spot in the game. Like a, like a drone or something flying around, you can now render onto a texture from a camera instead of just to a screen. Uh, now it's got native compute shaders. That'll be incredibly useful for people that use compute shaders. I would love to get into using compute shaders, but I really have not had a chance or like the understanding of like a project to the level that I could can speed up with compute shaders. Uh, flexible vertex, mesh vertex layouts, uh, not entirely sure what this is, I'm assuming it's to do in the migration guide, they changed it from, uh, uh, what was it, it was insert, no, they changed it to insert, it was set attribute, now they changed it to insert attribute because it then uses some kind of key to work out which pipeline to render, so uh, specialized mesh pipeline for some custom mesh. And then it says the key is some custom key, and it lets you modify your uh, vertex layouts, especially. So I think it's like about loading and buffering uh, shaders, especially. Uh, camera marker components is also in the migration guide if you want to know more about how you would use this. But it's simply that instead of using the camera's name to know, to like to distinguish between like the 3D and the 2D camera, they've got markers that are added to them, just a component that has a name. So instead of querying and then all cameras and then running through, you can query for camera with specific name. Uh, 
Organic system ordering. This is will be useful for people that didn't want to use labels. I'm happy I didn't put my labels video out, unlike my queries video that's now out of date. But ergonomic labels is instead of having to come up with a label, like it's saying here, where you have a, this is a is a label that I can then use label and after. It can now you can just say, oh, put this system in and then run this one after that other system, which will make um, like more readable code in that you can see which systems it runs after. It also would be really good for um, like animation libraries that they can export their like animation steps. Like uh, in my Bevy sprite animation, I have a um, before and after update of state. Like you update your state, then you calculate which animation to play. And exporting that as, as a label would be more uh, useful for me. But internally, if I didn't want to export it, like in my game, it would be much more useful to be able to just say this system leads into that system. Uh, default shorthand is just a macro that they've added. So instead of typing default, default, you can just put dot, dot, default. This to me isn't really that big of a change or even that necessary of a change because most IDs that have a Rust language engine, as soon as you put the two dots are like, oh, you're trying to type dot, de uh, dot, dot, default. Like they're really good with the IntelliSense on that. So I don't really know why this is important. And especially considering I don't even think it would speed up compile time because it would need to run the macro to de-reference it to the old version. But they decided it was uh, something that people wanted. It would make sense if it was um, more than just in a single thing, though. Like if you nested multiple and only had to do it at the end, which I've seen a plug-in on, on Bevy's asset page that does that, where it removes the need to put the default at all because basically there's a lot of times where you want to edit a single field so you'll set that single field and then that field will be generating a struct that you then generate more structs. Bevy also added a many function to its queries which is not in my video because I made the video before 1.7 came out. Uh, but it just lets you get access to multiple uh, components from a query without needing to worry about the uh, borrow checker getting annoyed that you're borrowing it mutably twice. So it then makes it uh, on the user to, to make sure that entity one and entity two or however many entities you wrap into the struct are individual and unique so that you basically confirm to the borrow checker that you've already made sure so that it can reason about things. They added parameter sets instead uh, to replace query sets, which just basically do exactly the same thing, but can hold more than just queries. They can hold like references to world and stuff and uh, resources. So you can have a mutable and unmutable version and stuff like that. Uh, Deref derive is basically just, again, more quality of life. So that instead of having to go item dot zero, you can derive deref on it and then use it as it is the containing item. Very simple. Uh, what do we got next is our world Word query derive. Oh, this is a nice, uh, again, a quality of life about basically reducing the amount of times you have to repeatedly type the same thing is you can now make a struct that has mutable references with lifetime W or whatever lifetime you feel like giving it, but it's the lifetime of the world. And then you can use that as a query parameter and it will basically automatically expand into your query. Uh, next is world resource, which is just an extension of the get resource functions that are now uh, infallible. So the process will panic instead of returning a none. So if you know the resource should exist and don't want a situation where the resource doesn't exist, you can now do that. Uh, any of query is again, something not in my queries video because it didn't exist, but lets you designate two or a, a tuple of components that if it matches any of them it'll return what it matched which uh, would make it much easier instead of having like the option and I'm assuming it's about being faster than saying like option A and option B because it in in the documentation it specifically says you don't want an option with zero matches because it means it would have to check every single entity in the world multiple times and you end up with an O of N so or actually it might be even O of N squared, 
or O of n to the um, what it, however many parameters you have. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, world system parameter. This is a very useful thing for anyone who wants access to the world, but only temporary. Just another reason for your your parameter sets is this will conflict with all mutable queries, but it basically just lets you have immutable access to the world so you can basically check every single, um, like if you needed to get a resource or something, but you don't know what until at runtime, which resource you might be accessing. So if you had like a, a button system or something like that, you could make that using the world parameter so that you can basically query anything you feel like you need. Uh, they've improved the sound or oh, the easiest soundness and correctness. It's just um, changing some things around. I've read through this. It's not really important unless you're doing things on the low level, I don't think. It just guarantees that the ECS will do things consistently where it, before it was doing some weird things in wrong order. Uh, the audio controls is they've, they've moved the audio system around so that you can like play, pause, set volume, and sync and stuff inside a resource instead of however they did it before because not really played with Bebby's audio. But yeah, it just it makes it much easier to use and I think they mentioned that 1.8 will come with more audio things. They've literally just added some extra functionality to make it more useful. Uh, sprite anchors is useful for anyone doing a 2D game that you know you can now set a pivot point so that you can rotate around not the center of your sprite. Defaults to the center but you can you know set top left or I, I would assume they have a pixel specific anchor. Um, Event loop power saving mode is a function that lets you update as fast as possible, only update when the window receives an, a window event. So yeah, only when Windows tells it it needs to redraw does it update. Good for like UI only games or like I guess if you were doing um, some kind of strategy game where it's like it only needs to update when something actually moves on the screen and then there's the even lower power mode which only updates when the user actually inputs something to the screen uh, document uh, documentation improvements is exactly as it sounds just new better examples uh dev docs I believe it is that now you can go on the bevy engine.org here the the dev docs and it'll have a um automatically updated one that gets uh, redeployed every time they update the main branch, which will be useful for people that are sitting on the main branch, but completely unnoticeable for anyone who only uses 0.7 or like full releases. But definitely seems useful for anyone who's uh, messing around on the main branch. Uh, website improvements is just if you're on bevy.org, it now tells you what the next and previous is and has these collapsible stuff. Nothing particularly interesting. They did add a... Uh, scene viewer tool which let's is, is just one of the examples which is a great use of examples in my opinion for rust is to um implement like usable tools into your examples so bevy now has a scene viewer which you can fly around and look at your scenes and then it's just thanking everyone who's contributed which is like a lot of people and a lot of fixes so that's bevy 0.7 I'm sorry the video took a little bit longer than I expected to get made. I really struggled to find time. But I hope you enjoyed and uh, like, comment, subscribe. And the um, next Bevy Basics is on the local system, which got an update. So I will see you in that.